All right, welcome back to The Edge. Time now for our game time segment. Tonight we're talking wrestling, bowling, athletes signing letters of intent, and more. Doug Ritchie, as always, is here. A happy Super Bowl Sunday. Dude. Yeah, it's been a super day. It has, <laughs> has been so far. It's still, still going along. Hey, uh, some interesting things going on, especially high school basketball-wise. Conferences really starting to figure themselves out now. Yeah, you know, a couple of weeks ago we were talking about four or five teams in the mix for conference races. Starting to whittle down to maybe two teams now, and a lot of these conference races are getting interesting. We're going to talk about some of those conference races, and we'll start tonight with the basketball. And our game of the week from this past week in the FRCC's, the De Pere Sheboygan North rematch. It's really lived up to expectations, I think, Doug. Yeah, this was a real good game, and you know these two teams coming out were going to score a lot and, and put a lot on each other. And two really fun teams to watch. Devin York with a very classy play right there. Yeah, that's right, the old <laughs> knock it off the defender who's not. <laughs> you think people would know that by now. You don't turn your back to that guy taking the ball and bounds, but. A big win, uh, really, for De Pere in this one, and they uh, end up taking control of this area. Well, it's a big win, uh, you know, but it's now we're done with it and it's time to move on. I think we have five conference games left, starting with Green Bay Preble on Friday. And I, we just talked to the kids about, hey, we put ourselves in a very good position, uh, but it doesn't mean anything if you let one slip. And so now it's just game by game, grind them out and make sure we take care of business down the stretch. Well, let's take a look at the FRCC then. Uh, the Top now, De Pere still undefeated up there, 17 and one overall. I mean, it reminds me a lot of last year. A lot of you know mm -hmm. these De Pere teams are just kind of rolling. Yeah, and what's impressive is if they can go undefeated in this conference. Look at our look at our rankings. Yeah. Not, this isn't a patsy conference. If they go undefeated, that's saying something. Oh yeah, Bayport and Pulaski, Sheboygan, well, all these teams have had really great years so far. And any of these teams could make it could make some kind of noise in their state tournament. Yeah, and a lot of them so. are going to hit each other yeah. in the in the Division One bracket. And Pulaski's out of that, but the others. They might hit each other. It's going to make it real interesting. Now we're going to move now to the uh, girls' court. Our girls' game of the week this week was Friday night. Freedom hosting Fox Valley Lutheran. And uh, Doug, this one was uh, an interesting game as well as uh, Freedom really kind of taking control of this one. Yeah, this was, uh, I guess the coaches would like to say it was great defense because both, sure. teams, both teams didn't <laughs> shoot well, even though Katie Dole hit a three-pointer there. 42-37, uh, lots, lots of defense. These teams like to pressure each other, and I think it worked against the offenses. Yeah, you know, Freedom, uh, they've also had good program for uh, quite a while, and they're looking to try to make some noise this year. Even up here with Fox Valley uh, for a few weeks now, and we saw that, th that they were coming. Obviously, you see that game, you know it's going to be a big one. And to, to get the effort that we got out of the girls and uh, in, this, in this type of setting, um, outstanding, outstanding. Girls laid it on the line against a very, very good team, and uh, we were fortunate enough to get it done. Here's Eastern Valley and to Freedom now 10 and 1. Uh, that, you know, that matchup really key there getting that win kind of puts them in the driver's seat now for the conference. Yeah, last five years, Freedom is 74 and 6 in this league. They're used to being that first team <laughs> on the standings. 74 and 6. But you know, hey, the Foxes have had a great year so far. Yeah, I mean, FPL's real really... good, Xavier's real good, Bruin and Rippin quietly are having nice years too. Yeah, we, we've seen that in the past. You know, there are, you never know where that state finalist or that no, who's going to state's going to come from. It could be any of those top five, six teams. Let's take a quick look at the FRCC because you know, it's starting to become a two team race really for the girls between Bayport and De Pere. But it's legal. Also, some great teams. Also, some really good individual performers, Doug, amongst these players. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Each time I see these three girls, uh, we're talking Kenzie Pertu right here. We know about her, about 1,300 points. Just a special, special player. She's the one of the few girls I've seen that really knows how to draw a foul and get the three pointer. This girl, Chelsea Nucker, best passer I've seen probably ever in high school mm. girls basketball. That's, uh, she makes something. some passes that are incredible. And then a sophomore here, Ali Leclerc from Notre Dame. She's a scorer, and all she got the assist there. This kid can flat out score, and uh, all three of these girls are in the running for the FRCC Player of the Year, and uh, real special kids. Well, let's take a look at that FRCC because uh, right now Bayport at 10 and one, and De Pere at nine and one, and we've seen Bayport and De Pere, the boys and girls, both such strong <laughs> programs this year. Yeah, in a couple of weeks they have back-to-back -back games, boys and girls, Bayport, De Pere. Mm -hmm. I might be at those. <laughs> we might see a Doug Ritchie <laughs> signing. Uh, Sheboygan, North Notre Dame, and Preble all having really, really good seasons. As we say, any one of those teams, you could see them making a little noise in state. Well, let's take a look now at our games of the week because, you know, it's time for the unveiling. You ready? Absolutely. You ready? All right, we're going to start with girls. Uh, Oshkosh, Washington, Appleton North, uh, Appleton North number 11 on the Fox 11 top 11 from this last week. That'll be on Tuesday. What do you like about this one? Elimination game. The loser cannot win the FBA. Uh, with Appleton East, if one loss, the winner stays in it. All right, and for the boys, the Ghosts uh, against the Papermakers, uh, it's, the, it's the K game. Yeah, it's a K-Town game, and uh, both teams are tied for first, so 
It's going to be a huge game in Kimberly. That's going to be a great atmosphere. Yeah, we're look, looking forward to, uh, to getting, that one, uh, getting that one as well. Well, uh, uh, you know, as we uh, talk about all these things, we've also got our No Problem Play of the Week. And we go to ice hockey uh, because, uh, hey, how about Bayport and the, the Bayport goal? Some sweet plays. That, that, check, check, out, check that out. That, that's something you don't teach. That's something you hope you hit the puck with. Yeah, know? exactly. Great play. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, it's our uh, Dermatology Associates play of the week. All right, well, you know, reaching a Super Bowl is something every team dreams of. And for the Kakana Bowling team on March 2nd, it will be a reality because they're going to hit the lanes of the Super Bowl in Appleton for the state bowling meet. Jude Wilbur is now with the story. The bitter taste of falling one game short of state last season gave way to the sweet taste of victory this year. At 9-0, the Ghosts have already clinched their first ever state appearance. We were so close to going every year for us, and to finally go with, be our time to go, it's just a great feeling. It's been really like amazing. We just go out there every week and focus on ourselves, not on the other team. The Ghosts have opened the door to the state tournament by closing their frames. They pick up their spares at the best rate in their league. It's awesome because the other team needs a double to beat that frame. We do such a great job at picking up a space because when we're practicing, we throw tend to throw out the 10 pin and the 7 pin to you know be able to get that right away. Basically, you just got to stay consistent with your form and be able to Know, know where you got to hit your shot and hit it. Picking up their spares is just part of the increased preparation time for the senior laden group. We made sure we went to the houses like a couple days advanced to our meets to practice. And you have to know what you're going to deal with so you know what type of pattern you have to throw on to be able to maneuver your ball in the right spot. You know, we kind of know each person's like, you know, their what they, their habits and stuff, so we can help them out usually if there's, some, if there's a problem. However they fare at State, this team has already made their coach proud. I'm just really, really happy for them. That's what we do, buddy. We don't miss fair. I think they're peaking at the right time. In Kakana, Jude Wilbers, Fox 11 Sports. All right, well, here, uh, let's take a look right now where they're going to be. It's going to be at the Super Bowl in Appleton and the for the boys. And it's March 2nd through the 4th, and also in Appleton, Sabre Lanes. For the girls, uh, so good luck to all of them. And they're at states. You know, one of the uh, first sports to get the postseason is wrestling. A couple of the best teams in Friday in the area went at it Friday night. They just kept going next week. Hot packed house. Luxembourg Casco visiting number two Oconto Falls. And uh, you know, I tell you, the schools that are wrestling schools, the crowds are fantastic. Yeah, they're very passionate, especially Luxembourg. They Bob Brasso has been coaching there a long time. Them being one of the best wrestling schools in the state, hardly a surprise. Yeah, exactly. And this was a, quite a match night against Oconto Falls. Uh, Alexa Picasco uh, getting the win 32-26 in the final. They're going to be getting going, as we mentioned, in state competitions starting already next week. Well, as a quarterback West appear, Jay Tollefson, he never lost a game, won two straight state titles, Doug. And Wednesday, the West Superior quarterback was rewarded for his accomplishments by signing a scholarship to play the position he wanted to play. That's quarterback at Northern Michigan. Jay Tollison breathed a sigh of relief Wednesday when he signed his national letter of intent. The do-everything quarterback can now relax as he knows where he's going to be playing his college football. You know, it's definitely a good feeling to know where I'm going next year. It's kind of a relief, you know, I don't uh, stress about, you know, finding a place to go next year. So it's definitely nice to have this over with. West Superior coach Bill Turnquist had a front row seat for Tollison's greatness and said the quarterback was quite a player. You know, it's, you're losing someone very, very special to our program. <laughs> and um, he's done it for so long, for so many games. It's going to be hard to replace that go-to person. I, I don't have any idea who it's going to be right now. Tollison is a superior athlete who is also recruited by Division I schools for other positions. However, Tollison wanted to play quarterback, and Northern Michigan is letting him have that opportunity. Yeah, that was definitely, uh, definitely huge for me. You know, I want to, want to try to continue to play quarterback. You know, they're giving me that option, so you know, I'm, I'm taking it. Tollison at quarterback certainly looks like a good way to win a lot of games. Good to see him get to go where he wants to go. I mean, what a talented player that uh, Jay has been for so long at West Superior yep. in the last couple of years. Yeah, it's been know, fun to watch. 28 0, two state titles. Give him a shot at quarterback. Sure. Right? Like, like, like I said at the end of the piece, it's a good way to win games. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you, if, if people don't think he can do it, he's probably going to do it. Yeah, ask Coach T about yeah. that. <laughs> he moved into quarterback and. <laughs> 
You start to win a state title like crazy. All right, well, also a couple other signees this week that we uh, got to. Bayport had a couple of signees yesterday, as, or uh, Wednesday, rather, as uh, Luke Wendricks going to Minnesota State to play football. Katie McCormick going to play soccer for North Dakota State. Wendricks, a lineman. He's going to have a family connection at the school while Katie's a goalkeeper, and she's going to a program that's already had some success. It'll be a good change to go there, but it'll be fun. The team is doing really good, so hopefully I can add to it. I'm going to play with my brother. I'm pretty excited. I think it'll be a fun experience for us. Always a lot of fun to see those guys. If sign on the dotted line, the guys and gals are going to, uh, to some big places. And uh, we see some real talented players going to a lot of, a lot of great places uh, here. Doug, Evan Cans going to Eastern Illinois. Caleb, Benla uh, Caleb Bel Belknap going to Minnesota Duluth with uh, David Runno. Uh, Gabe Roberts going to Pitt. That's a big, uh, big coup. Yeah, that's a pretty good uh, signing right there. Yeah, good for him. Johnny Egan going to Northern Illinois. Also, we've got some guys going to Northern Michigan to uh, be there with uh, Jay Tollison, Drew Wetke, uh, Wetke from Bondowell is going to go there. His teammate Spencer Fremming is going to Michigan Tech, where he'll join Tanner Kaiser's from Little Shoot, Nathan Myers from Notre Dame going to Southwest Minnesota. So just some of the people that some of the young student athletes are going to be doing, uh, get moving on in their scholastic and athletic careers.